do you think about when I say the word history? Do you think of your days in school? Do you think of having to memorize significant dates, people, and events? What if I told you that you can better yourself through history? By looking at history in a different perspective, you can better yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. That's something you never thought about when you cracked open a textbook in history class, right? So how in the world can history help better yourself physically? Well, let's go back to the year 1777. British forces had dealt the American army a crushing defeat at the Battle of Brandywine. The British then occupied Philadelphia. They stayed in Philadelphia as winter set in and enjoyed the high life of the city. British generals went to dances, formal dinner parties, and balls, while the soldiers relaxed and were quartered in the homes of British-sympathizing Philadelphians. They were living it up in the city, so to speak. However, little training was happening within the British forces. They were not physically up to par. They were generally unfit after their sluggish winter there. They had been partying and drinking all winter long. The Americans were in a different spot. They had retreated to Valley Forge after their defeat at Brandywine. Winter there was miserable. It was six degrees at its lowest, and men were eating moldy biscuits and even leather. Although they were not living the comfortable life, like the British, they were training. A Prussian officer by the name Frederick Steuben had volunteered to help the American army. He assisted them by training and disciplining the army. He taught them how to march and fight in formation, how to fight with a bayonet, and how to more efficiently load and fire their rifles. The Americans were preparing for the next battle, while the British were preparing for parties. When both armies left that spring, they were different. The Americans were invigorated, disciplined, and physically ready for battle. They were ready to fight and to win. The British came out as a sluggish, out-of-practice army. They had not done anything to better themselves. They may have been happy when they were celebrating in the city, but they were not when they were unfit for battle. Their months of gluttony were obvious when they were unable to defeat the Americans at the Battle of Monmouth. The British didn't better themselves, and the Americans did. Our lives are much the same in principle. Think of how this applies to you and bettering yourself physically. Let's say you want to become stronger. Like the Americans, you have to make sacrifices. It could be giving up that night out with friends and instead going to the gym to lift weights. Living the life of leisure didn't work for the British soldiers, and it won't work for you if you want to get stronger. Or maybe you want to run a marathon. That requires a training program and discipline. You can't wait for the motivation to exercise every day. Motivation is an emotion, and emotions are fickle. What you can depend on is your personal discipline. Doing what is hard today puts you one step closer to your goal. So go out for a run when you feel like watching TV, or when you'd rather hit the snooze button. Train when it's six degrees out like the soldiers did at Valley Forge. You will be happy you did in the days to come. And maybe you will win your battle, just like the Americans did. Looking at history through a different perspective can also help better yourself mentally. Let's go to the year 1804, when Lewis and Clark set off on their expedition to chart the West. This was not, hey, grab your tomahawk and let's explore in this boat I found. <laughs> they were literally entering uncharted territory and didn't know what they would face. Lewis, who did the bulk of the preparations, spent six months mentally preparing for the expedition. He had to be well-versed in many subjects in order to make the trip a success and come home alive. He had to learn about botany to know what kind of plants he could use for medicine and food. Lewis spent time in Philadelphia studying under Benjamin Rush for medicinal knowledge. Lewis studied natural history in Philadelphia as well as paleontology and mineralogy. He had to learn about the stars and mapping to navigate the new territory. Lewis even spent time right here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, 
studying astronomy under Andrew Ellicott. He had to try and prepare to the best of his ability, with little idea of what he was up against. In addition to all of this, Lewis had to calculate the amount of supplies he would need for his expeditionary unit of 33 people and a dog. He brought rifles, ammunition, gunpowder, maps, provisions, and more. He personally designed a steel-framed collapsible boat. He did all of this so that his expedition would succeed. Failure to prepare for Lewis meant the death and failure of the expedition. Failure to prepare for you may mean the death of your dream. What's your expedition? What can you do today to mentally prepare for it and to move towards it? Maybe it's taking a class or reading a book. We can always learn more. We can always improve our lives. By expanding our horizons, we can navigate our seemingly impossible expedition. History can also help better yourself emotionally. The year is 1966. Carlos Hathcock was deployed to Vietnam, a legendary sniper. He had 93 confirmed kills during his service. He was known for taking out all of the snipers the North Vietnamese sent to assassinate him. Once, he went on what was called a suicide mission, from which no one expected him to return. The plan was to drop him from a helicopter in enemy territory and have him crawl 1,500 yards through a field swarming with enemy patrols in order to reach his target, a North Vietnamese general. So to put that in perspective, that's 15 football fields crawling at an average of 15 yards per hour for 96 hours, crawling inch by inch on his side so he left less of a trail to make it across the field, undetected, to the firing position. He shot the general from 700 yards away and escaped unseen. 700 yards is an incredible distance to hit a target from, even under ideal conditions. He accomplished this under intense pressure and extreme emotional stress. He said several times he was so close to the enemy, he could have stuck out his leg and tripped them. He had to remain emotionally sound and not break down under pressure. He had to keep his goal in mind and persevere, even in unimaginable, life-threatening conditions. Think about this in our lives. Sometimes we need to keep focused on a goal, even when we get discouraged, stressed, tired, or scared. Focus on that target that you want to get. Don't waste time thinking about how hard it might be to achieve. Get excited about what it will be like when you get it. These are just three examples of how we can better ourselves through history. The story of American and British forces teaches us how we can better ourselves physically. How Lewis prepared for his expedition shows us how we can grow mentally. Sniper Carlos Hathcock inspires us to keep our emotions in check and persevere through adversity. When you read a story about history, think about how you can grow from it. Think about what made people achieve, succeed, or fail. Many times, history is made by people rising above their perceived ability or circumstance by growing physically, mentally, and emotionally. You will soon find yourself writing an exciting new chapter in your own history book. Thank you. Thank you.